Come on, we can do better than that. Welcome back, Pastor Kirk. <laughs> Welcome back, Pastor Kirk. 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 Amen. And before you have your seats, find two or three people who you have not met in a while and say, A good God bless you. Praise God. How much are you guys happy to be in church this morning? Amen. How much are you guys happy to be part of the church this morning? <laughs> well, it's good to be back. Um, we had a great time there. Um, it felt like a, a it felt like a world tour. You know, going going to New York. I was able to see my mom. Sit down and had breakfast with her and had a good few hours there with her and then flew across to California and we will be able to, to we were able to um, drop off um, Thais to Bible school. Amen. All right, so keep her in prayer, you know. Transition is not always an easy thing. You know, leaving mommy behind and stuff like that. So I pray for Indira too, right? So <laughs> Yeah, she was crying coming back in the car. And... Oh, yeah. We were able to do that. Plus, I was able to, to minister at three churches while I was there. Um, I was there at. Is that Christian there? Okay. Hi, Christian. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was able to minister at three churches there at Pastor Sergio's church. Pastor Sergio um, ha, um, actually celebrated his birthday yesterday, and um, we had a great time there, really, really good time there. We see lots of lots of healings. Um, I was able to minister just Pastor Joshua Christian Church, and we had an also awesome time there, and at Robert Bobak, Pastor Robert Bobak's Church in Santa Cruz. So it was fun. It was fun. You know, ministry is fun. Well, yeah, I guess. I guess I can turn this way and get an amen. <laughs> How much you guys here in ministry? Okay. Well, let me tell you guys this. Oh, the kids have to go upstairs? Okay. Let me say this, guys. The moment... You accepted Jesus Christ in your life. You came into ministry. Can I say it again? You see, we get the idea that ministry is all about coming on this stage. That this is part of ministry. This is when we get to minister to you. And this is where we get to minister to Him... But when we leave those doors, your ministry begins. So whether you're a housewife, whether you work at a gas station, whether you're in school, you are in ministry. You are there to advance the kingdom of God. How much you guys know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had an incredible ministry? She raised Jesus. You guys are awfully quiet this morning. Okay. All right. So, that's um, kids. You guys can go up to the kids' church. Let's thank God for kids as they go. Hallelujah. Hmm. Let's stand for one more minute, please. 
Can we just pray in the spirit for a little bit? Let's go ahead. I want you to pray strong. I want you to hear yourself. And if you haven't prayed in the spirit before, you can ask God to fill you now and He will. Come on. Shakara ba de 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 be be. Sukura bungo de 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 be be be. Salala bra mangle le le ke shukura ba 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 ba. Selele bi ambro bundo ro ko sombre benge de 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 ke shakala ba. Oh, salara bangle le le be shakala bra ba. Sure de 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 ke shakara mangle le le ke sha. Oh, sombre benge de le le ke shakara banga la ba ba sata. Oh God, we awake our spirits unto you this morning, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come out of that slumber. And we press into you in the name of Jesus. We press into you, God, this morning. Oh, Sede Arabang. Awake our spirits this morning, God. Soko Ramangele Shakara Mangede. Sala Rebede Sakara Bangalai. Oh, selelele bengalala sata. Oh, rabangelele sotorobo. Oh, selelele. Fill us again. Fill us again. Fill us again, God. Fill us again. Lord, we want more of you. We want more of you, God. We want more of you in the name of Jesus. We want more of you in the name of Jesus. Sala rebede de sokorabangele de kishakadabai. Hallelujah. And I want you to give him a shout right now. Come on, uh, come on. Hallelujah. Let's try that again. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You guys can have your seats. Feel better, right? Yeah. Sometimes the enemy comes and does that. And we have to understand that we don't bow to the atmosphere that's around us. The atmosphere has to bow to us. Amen? Has to bow to us. But sometimes, how much of you guys have what they call blue Mondays? You wake up, you, don't, you feel all depressed, you don't want to go to work. How much of you guys have been there? Well, then that's the time you, 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 you talk to yourself. And you say, no, you will arise... You will walk in the goodness of God. You will walk in the joy of God today. Amen. Sometimes I just decide to laugh. Even if I don't feel the laugh, I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. It doesn't matter. I don't care what the devil tells me. I, I, I am not influenced by him. Amen. Actually, let's dive straight in the message, the message this morning. Amen. I'll pray after, after. At the end, we have to do some praying at the end. If I want to die straight in this, I was wondering, I was in two minds of what to share this morning. And, um, because when I was, when, when I, um, I was aware, I, 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 I shared on unity, and, um, a lot, and for some reason when I'm sharing on unity, a lot of healings take place, which was, which was amazing. And I think it's because I end with that scripture when Jesus stood up in the synagogue and, and, and he read the scripture that the anointing of God is upon him to heal the brokenhearted and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, and he said that he gave the book back to the attendant and he sat down. And when he sat down, all eyes was on him. When all eyes was on him, then he declared, this scripture is fulfilled in, in, in your ears. Amen? He said, this scripture is now fulfilled. Why? Because all eyes was on him. When the focus is on Jesus, you will see the manifestation of his anointing. And really, we had some really, um, really good times there, praying for the people at the end. Actually, there's, there's one lady came, she couldn't walk properly in, um, in Pastor Sergio's church. And I saw in my spirit, taking her hand and telling her to walk. So I grabbed her hand and said, walk with me. And she made one step, here, pox. And she said, the pain left. And she left me and walked to Pastor Sergio and said, the pain left. And I said, the pop. 
on his left. You see, when, 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 when we focus on him, when you come to church, it's not that we're not here to focus on the worship team. We're not here to focus on Pastor Kirk. You're here to focus on Jesus. And when our eyes are on him, we're going to see the fulfillment of the anointing being manifested. Amen. Amen. And I share the same message there at Pastor Bubak's church. And the next day, someone who had, was, was due for chemo that week, uh, she was there, she had cancer. We, and and myself, we prayed for her. And this, she said the next day, all the symptoms left. So she had to go check herself to see what's really going on because all the symptoms left. It's amazing what can happen when our eyes are on him. Amen. Jesus wants to manifest himself in the church. Let me say it again. Jesus wants to manifest himself in the church. And when I say church, guys, I want you to have this understanding. It's not about these four walls. This is not the church. This is where the church gathers. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are the church. Amen? The Bible said that we, the church is, is the bride of Christ. His body, that's the church. The place, the temple where he dwells in, that's the church. When, when we leave here, the church leaves here. That's why, that's why I begin by asking you guys, how much you guys are in ministry? You are in the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. You are, you are the continuation of his ministry in the earth. Every one of you, the moment you accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you are in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's a, who's, where's my friend who I met coming to the airport? Is she here? I come to the airport and this, this, this lady across there waits to see if I recognize her. And she said, hi, Pastor, can I jump like that all the time? <laughs> Good to see you. So, so we, we must see ourselves as a channel for Jesus to walk through. Amen. So I want to look at that this morning because I mean plenty, a lot of people were healed in the last week but people are not being healed because it was Pastor Kirk praying for them. Amen. It's because I'm allowing Jesus to walk through me. I couldn't heal a flea if it had a headache. Amen. But it's Jesus being released through me that does the, does the work. Amen. I am just as amazed and, and grateful and excited when I see it. And I want to say this, guys. I was, when I was going through my, my nose just a little while ago, I was, this thought came to my mind. And, and I was saying, wow, if God can use me, he could use anybody. Let me say it again. If God can use me, He can use anybody. I remember the first time when I came back from Bible college, I met a friend in, in Long Circular Mall on the top floor. And, and, and he asked, ah, Kirk, I haven't seen you in so long. Wait, wait, what have you been doing? I said, this is Bible college. He said, what? You? I said, yeah, I just got it from Bible college. He began to laugh. And laughed. I heard him laughing going down all the stairs. He just, just kept laughing. Was <laughs> he, was, he was shocked. You know, and he, he was like, it didn't make sense. Right? And, so much, and many of you guys, it might not make sense to you that God can use you, but he, but he can't. I don't know about you, I mean, uh, even from a, a scholastic point of view, I mean, I have one or level pass. When I went to the Bible, Bible college, I didn't even know the, back, the books of the Bible. Actually, did, I had an exam to write down all the books of the Bible the next day, and the night before, Hosea was teaching me the books. Amen. 
God can use anybody. I mean, I can go on and on on how terrible I was. I was terrible. All right. I just said that because I want you to know that every, what qualifies you is when you're willing to do what you're not qualified to do. Amen. God can use every one of us today. Every one of us. And He wants to. All right. Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 3. It says here, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Which is your light? Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See the darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is, is, is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. Look at this. Nation shall come to whose light? See? Because, because the light has come upon you, the light that He gave you is now yours. Now you become a light. You become one who now is in ministry. You see that? So every one of us, you're in ministry. Why? Because you are a light. Your light and the things, the nations shall come to your light and what? And kings to the brightness of your dawn. What is this saying? Kings are people in a, that, that has influence. Actually, the, the most influential person in a, in, 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 in a nation is a king. And they say, kings will come to you. What is this saying? That we will be able to influence the influential. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're an influencer. Amen. So it's time for us to arise. That word arises comes from the Hebrew word zarak, which means to come forth. To come forth. Right? God will move upon his people again. As we increase in unity, and as we increase in love. Amen. His glory will, say will, will appear over us. In other words, it, it, if it's going to appear, it means it has to be seen. I want you guys ready to shine. Jesus will be seen in His church. Nations will come to us. Amen. Look at John 14 and verse 21. It says, he who has my commandments, or his word, and keeps them, say keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him, and what? And what? And manifest myself to him. That word manifest means to be made real or obvious to your senses. So God wants, Jesus wants to manifest himself. In other words, he wants to, to be made visible. He wants to be made obvious to you. But this comes as we obey His commandments. I want you guys to remember that. In other words, He wants us to experience His presence on the earth in a very real way. 
Well, let me say this, guys. You don't need to die to experience heaven. That's why Jesus taught us when he's teaching his disciples to pray. He said, on earth as it is in. So you don't need to die to experience heaven because heaven can be experienced on the earth. How much you guys ready to experience heaven now? It's about time. Amen? A little phrase came up in my head. I might as well say it. To hell with the devil. Amen? Amen? He ain't going to bring hell here. We're going to bring heaven here. We are here to bring heaven. So the glory of God will be seen as Jesus reveals himself in our human temples of clay. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us. Amen? That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. And look at the scripture here in, in, in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 14. It says here, however, when he, the spirit of, the spirit of, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his, on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Say to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. That word declare means to show and reveal. So the Holy Spirit is working in us. To bring us into truth. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. So he is revealing Jesus to us. And as we get revelation of Jesus, we experience him. You see, the purpose of a revelation is to bring you into an encounter with that revelation. God reveals things to us because He wants you to experience it. Can I say that again? If you get a revelation from God, whether it's healing, deliverance, provision, whatever it is, if God reveals Himself to you, it's because He wants you to come into an experience with that revelation. Amen? I want you guys to know that that's why he wants to manifest himself. So that revelation becomes obvious. You can sense it. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can experience it. This is why he wants you to taste and see. If you taste something, it's because you experience it. How much you guys want to taste of heaven? He wants you to experience heaven where? No. I want you guys to see that. It's not about this sweet by and by. It's not about that pie in the sky. It's the here and now. Amen. First Corinthians three and verse sixteen. Do you not know? That you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you. How much of you guys have accepted Jesus into your life? When you accept Jesus into, into your life, who comes into your life is the Spirit of Jesus. Amen? So all of us, once you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen? And without his working, as we see just in that scripture, without you allowing him to work in you, you will, you will not come into the truth, which is, which is knowing Jesus. So we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. And he's the spirit of truth, and he will use truth for you to come into a greater relationship with Christ. 
Amen? Amen. So I believe in this next season that we are about to enter, the Holy Spirit will, will reveal Jesus to us in ways we have not seen Him before. Now I was thinking about this, and, and, and I do, in, in our Bible school here, I do teach on the God's Generals class, which is looking at what God did. Right? And I do that because for people to be able to see what's possible with God. But I also want you to see this morning that we have to be careful that when we look back and see what God did, that we don't get stuck and believe that's the only thing He can do. And that's a challenge. And yes, we need to look back at times so that we can be encouraged, so that our faith can be built up. But it's, 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 it's being built up to something. And many times we, 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 we come with a mentality or with experiences and think God only does things a certain way all the time. This is why when Jesus came on the scene, he was rejected by the Pharisees because all their reference was, was about Moses. Not realize that God is doing a new thing in their eyes, in, in front of them. Amen. And I believe God wants to do a new thing. How much of you guys like new things? Amen. All of us like new things. It's the truth. But if for some reason we sing these silly, these silly little songs like, Oh, give me that old time religion. Give me that. I don't want old time religion. It was good enough for them. <laughs> it's not good enough for me. And it's an unneed. How much you guys want the latest cell phone? The latest television? The latest house? The latest vehicle? How much you guys want some electric vehicles? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You know, none of you guys will leave here. Neither I needed a car and go and buy a little put put. You remember what we used to call it a little put put? We used to, I love that. We used to drive around in a put put. It's the truth. That car was so terrible. When it rained, we got wet on the inside. For a while, it was so bad. When, it, when we went through flood water, we had to raise our feet because we had a built in foot washer on the inside. You know, that's, you, you remember that? Thanks. I will not go and buy that car. You said, Amen. But for some reason, when we when we come in Christ, we want to always go back to the old. Now, why do we sing all these songs we don't know? Because you need a new song. I mean, you know that I, I hate the old songs. Amen. I don't hate it, but we got to move on. Because the song, the new songs that we sing today are going to become old songs tomorrow. God wants to do a new thing among us. He wants us to see. And it's, and it's, it's funny. Let me just say this, guys. I'm just talking. That's all right. Just before I left, for, for the trip, I, I went to one of our members, um, uh, Brother Muhammad, and he could, I think I mentioned that here, and he couldn't move his hand. And when I prayed for him, he, after I prayed, he sat down and he stretched forward, and I heard that pop, pop, and all the pain left. So I thought, I said, wow. And then I went to the California, and the same thing with the lady's leg. I said, man, there's something new. Like a, like a pop pop anointing. <laughs> God wants to do a new thing. Now, I always tell people that if my name was Old Alo, I'll change that name too. I like my name, New Alo. <laughs> Amen.
This aloe is going to be new. Ain't old nothing. Amen. And the Bible goes on to say that the glory of the latter church is going to be greater than the former. Amen. So God wants us to, to experience something greater than what we once had. So please don't always go back to what you once had. Because God has greater in store for us. Amen. Let me tell you guys, your best days are ahead of us guys. Our most glorious days are ahead of us. I believe that. So let's see how we get there. Amen? Let's see how we get there. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. Let's see how we get into the greater things. It says, And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see this, that we are what you call a triune being. In other words, we are three in one because God created us in his image and his likeness. He is also three in one. So we are, we are a spirit that possess a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions that live in a body. Amen? This body allows us to function on the earth and to be able to connect with natural things. Amen? So we are a spirit and God is a spirit. So when he, like in, 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 in the beginning, when he communicated with Adam was spirit to spirit. Because he created a spirit being. And what he communicated to him affected his soul. Amen? Of course, at that time, he lived in a glorified body, which we will be moving into. Amen? But then man sinned. And sin brought death to the spirit. It did not destroy the spirit, but the spirit died. It sounds like an oxymoron, but well, let me explain this. I was thinking about this. How, how much you guys' phone ever died? Right? It died, but, it was, but your phone is not destroyed. See what I'm saying? So sin is what draws that life. It drew life out of, 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 the, of the spirit. And it died. But Jesus came and brought life back into that spirit. Amen. So now we can communicate with him again. Spirit to spirit. Right? But look now at Ephesians chapter 2. It says here, verses 1 to 3, it says, And you he made alive, you say it again, because that spirit was dead, not destroyed, dead. He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. In which, you, in which you once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of, of, of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom all, or whom we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of what? In the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the? And of the mind. 
and, and were and will by nature the turn of wrath just as the others. And that means the, the other people outside of the body. Amen? So, let me get you two guys come. Okay. So he looks a little more alive. <laughs> All right. So th- let's look. This is you, the spirit that possess a soul with a mind, will, and emotions. And this is <laughs> flesh. <laughs> right. For us to be sons of God, the Bible said, they that are led by the, are the sons of God. Or daughters, amen? Children, alright, children. And from here, God will speak to him, influencing the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And this guy here is supposed to just follow. When Adam became disobedient, there was a flip. Death came. He died. No life. But life was coming from somewhere else. Life was coming from the spirit of the world. But it worked this way now. Through the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And through here now, the soul man now was being, instead of being influenced by the spirit, is now being influenced from the flesh. So this is what happens. When we accept Christ now, Christ comes and puts life back into this guy. But this guy is still alive. So there must come a death to him. Right? This guy here now, the mind, will, and emotions now, this has to be renewed. Because there is a different nature that was influencing from this side. So this is why Paul was saying, yes, I I want to do what is right, but I still do what is wrong. There's a war inside of us. How much you guys have experienced that war? So this is what's going on. Right? Thanks, guys. So what is going to make the difference? And this is what I want to get into to this morning. Very simple message this morning, but we have to get this. This is what's going to make the difference. The Word of God is what comes in from the Spirit now. He speaks His Word to the Spirit. And that Word now has to transform or renew the mind. But that when we start to renew the mind, it puts death to the flesh. I know that we are a presence-driven church. You guys know that, right? We love His presence. We put His presence as priority. But there's a reason why the presence is our priority. It's not that we can come here and feel good and clap hands and dance. No, that's part of it, right? But we put ourselves in His presence so we can hear His voice. We can hear his word. And that word is what comes now like a knife. The sword of the spirit is the, the word. Look at, look, look, look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living 
and powerful and what? Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to, to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. How about you guys, when you were in sin, you thought you, what you were doing was okay? Well, I'm sorry, I'm probably talking to the wrong crowd. You guys probably were, had a, you know, born of the spirit from birth. And, but I don't have that testimony. What I was doing wrong, I thought it was the right thing. When I was... When I was jumping walls in Federation Park and pulling out of my bag with all the people's fruits, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought God put that there for me. You see, I know you guys laugh at me because you guys never did anything like that. You guys never, never. But I don't have that testimony. I did not grow up like... Saint Rambin. <laughs> I don't have that testimony. I did almost everything wrong under the sun and I thought it was right. Until... Until the Spirit of Truth came into me and convicted me of sin. Amen? As I said, guys, as the scripture says, this, was, this is the temple. Right? We are the temple. But the temple is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the body. And all will become one, as you guys will see in a little bit. But it is as if, even after we became Christians, there is still that war. It is still that challenge for Christ to come out of here to be revealed on there. You guys see what I'm talking about? It's just like, you remember when Jesus died? The scripture talks about the veil was ripped. Why was the veil ripped? Because behind the veil, that's where the manifest presence of God is. That's where the glory of God is. No, the, 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 the purpose and heart of God is for, is for His glory to be revealed. So that we can arise and shine. As we saw in the beginning. Right? But this veil has, is as if there's a veil inside of us. Which was created by the influences of the flesh. Now this veil has to be cut away. But what cuts it? The sword of the spirit. As we allow the word of God to come into our lives. That, that, that veil of flesh now is being stripped more and more. And the more of that veil is being stripped, is the more of God's glory will be seen in us. So this is what I'm saying. Yes, even though we are a presence-driven church, it doesn't mean that we have to ignore the word. And I've seen this in, 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 in a lot of churches that are presence driven, it's all of a sudden, now it's all about his presence, but there's a reason for his presence, is so that his word can come in and, and work within us. This is why Adam went to, to, to in the cool of the day to meet with what? The word. He went into his presence so he can get the word. And the same thing was you come here so you can get. The words you can hear from God. How much you guys in worship you hear his voice? He wants to speak to us. Of course he wants to speak to us. He is the word. <laughs> Amen. So we have to get addicted to his word again.
And I really want to challenge us this morning. I really want to challenge us. Yes, I, we, 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 we emphasize on, on the worship of God and the presence of God, but it doesn't stop there. There must also come an emphasis also of the, of the Word of God. There must come a, 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 a meshing of the Spirit and the Word. You, you know, I've realized with the presence driven churches like us is that you hear a lot of people talk like this I feel this and I feel that. When it should be, I know this and I know that. Because God said. See what I'm saying? Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It says, to them, will, to them God will to make known that are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. And this, is the, this is it, guys. Which is Christ in you, the what? The hope of glory. So we have Christ in us. But he wants to be revealed through us. But what is, what is keeping back the revelation of the Christ that we already have in our spirits is that veil of flesh. And it must be cut away by the word of God. Only when we allow that word to cut away that veil of flesh, that carnal mentality, the carnalness in our lives. And what is, let me just break it down. What is being carnal is the old selfishness. Basically, self it is. Another, it's all about how much of you guys realize we still fight with that even after we accept Christ. It's the truth, right? So, as the Word of God comes into our lives, all that begins to strip away, and as it strips away, the hope of glory comes forth. Amen. So as we crucify the flesh, that's what the, that's what the sword of the spirit does, you know. It crucifies the flesh. How much? All right, let me give you a quick example. How much you guys ever got wronged by somebody? Somebody offended you. Anybody ever been offended here? Well, bless your hands if you didn't raise your hand. But. <clears throat> But trust me, it will come. It's a prophecy in the Bible. Offense will come. All right? <laughs> but how much you guys, when somebody mash your corn, how much you guys want to, right? You guys understand what I'm saying? You want the eye for an eye scripture. The tooth for tooth. Tooth for tooth scripture. Huh? But because of that word that you just read, that's it to love your enemy. To do good to those who despitefully use you. I'm going to share experience with you guys. Just come to mind. One day, I used to play cricket right after church. Honestly. Church would end at 12. The game starts at 1. So I, I used to run out and go head to the cricket field. 
we were in a semi-final against Endeavor, where I live now. I live right behind the field. I can see the field from my back window. We needed to win that game to go to the next level. Let me see if any Endeavor cricketers here. Anyhow, as you know, Sometimes there are umpires, referees that are not nice. In other words, they take bribes. In my first innings, I scored 70 something runs. I'm going out to bat in the second innings. We just have a few runs to win the game outright. And my boy, the umpire, I wouldn't call his name. Decide to perform. So I am patting. I leave a ball. Let me see as I've seen how I see it. Leave a ball going on my leg side. The wicket keeper slides and collects the ball. And because he knows that the umpire has been paid, he appeals. So I was like, what is he appealing for? <laughs> you know? And I look this way, and his hand is like that. <laughs> I'm like... I have a bat in my hand. I have three stumps. This is a true story. I'm walking on my right hand. But this is the thought, right? This is the first thought. If I... They'll have to get a next umpire. If they get a next umpire, they see the example said, he ain't going to be doing that to the other guys coming behind him. I will take the fine, I will take the suspension. But my team will advance. The true story, yeah. true, true story. I walk in, so, and the old bellman coming out in there. <laughs> and this is what the Holy Spirit reminds me. What did you preach on this morning? I preach on love. And I walk past him, so. Look at this scripture now. Romans 8, verse 18. It says, I am convinced that any sufferings we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. That is what that word did to me. It caused me to suffer. You see, when we see suffering, we always think it's sickness, or disease. No, that's, this is not what Paul is talking about. This is not what Paul is talking about. This is the same guy who got bite by a viper and did not die. So it's not that kind of suffering he's talking about. Right? He's talking about the suffering we go through when people do wrong things to us and we have to turn the other cheek. 
when we have to love the unlovable, when we are tempted to do what is wrong and still do what is right. That is the suffering. But let me tell you something, it's worth it. It is worth it. Because what happens is that word comes and strip away that flesh that wanted to act up. And Christ now will be revealed because of that. Because of the suffering that we go through. The suffering that we go through to do what is right. Don't get quiet at me. Like you guys thinking about some right things to do. We all go through that, guys. We all do. We all, how much you guys have been tempted to do something wrong and you know if it did it, you'll feel good. But the word of God came and said, you know what? Turn the other cheek. Amen. So this is my message this morning. It's really short. I really want us to get turned on again to the Word of God. Amen. The importance of applying the Word in our lives. Because guys, we owe this Word an encounter with God. And if that veil of flesh remains there, they will not encounter God. The people encounter God through us. Through us. God wants to touch people through you. Amen. I mean, I was so blessed. No, honestly, I, you know, when God used me, I'm still amazed. I'm being honest with you guys. I'm still amazed. And I know, as I said at the beginning, if God can use me, He can use anybody. When I saw all those people got healed over the last two weeks, I was like, wow. Thank you, Lord, for using me. Amen. But it's not just for me. This is for the whole entire body of Christ. God wants to do a new thing within you. Amen. Look at Romans 8 and verse 18. Sorry, verse 19, sorry. <laughs> It says, for the earnest expectation of the, of, of, of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. Look at it in the TPT. It says, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. And this can only happen, guys, as we push into His presence so we can hear His voice. As we spend time in His Word and allowing the Holy Spirit now, the Spirit of Truth, to reveal Christ to us through His Word. Amen. But it is a process, guys. It is a process. Amen. And I'm, that's why I'm always so excited. Uh, how much you guys, how much you guys, how much, how much graduated from our Bible school? Oh, wow. How much are going to come to this next? Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. I'm excited. Why? Because when you meditate on God's word, what do you get? You get information. You get information. But what does information does? It gives you new understanding. It shows you a new way. So information moves into illumination. You are seeing something new. Things you've never seen before. But as you see things that are new, it creates new, a new desire to obey. Amen? Because I preached on love that morning, I had a desire not to clump him. You see what I'm saying? Can I preach on the wrath of God? It might have been different. (laughs) 
<laughs> Pastor get violent. Now look really good on the express front page. <laughs> Pastor express. Pastor express himself. <laughs> right? Amen. So we are inspired. So illumination moves, moves to inspiration. And inspiration moves to revelation. And if this is re- when you know you have a revelation is when you start acting on what you know. You see what I'm saying? So love became a revelation to me that day. Because I acted in love. I walked away when I could have walked towards him. Amen? But revelation, as we do that, it moves to realization. In other words, you start seeing more changes in your life through the obedience. You start to talk different. You start to walk different. The places you go, you don't go no more. You start to, to act different. The things you did, you don't do no more. So I'm saying that all begins by you spending time in the Word of God. And from that revelation, it moves into transformation. In other words, you're moving from glory to glory. Christ now is being more seen. In All of a sudden, people say, wow, you, you, something different about you, boy. Something really different about you. What is the difference? Christ in you. Amen? And then there becomes manifestation. From transformation, if there's a manifestation now. In other words, you're coming to greater oneness with God. In other words, you're now becoming bone of His bone, flesh of His flesh. The Word is becoming flesh in you. You're becoming the bride now without spot and wrinkle. You're beginning to shine. Amen? But we have to fall in love again with His Word. With His Word. I often tell my wife, you know, when I, when I sit down in the church, it really doesn't matter who's speaking. I'll be honest with you. It doesn't even matter the style. But I am looking to hear what he's saying to me. Because that word, once it comes into me, and I work that word, it allows now something me to, it, it, to fall off so that Christ can be revealed. More of Jesus can be seen. And that's the goal. Because the more Jesus is seen in me, is the more his light will attract the nations. They come to our light as we allow him to shine through us. Amen? Let's stand. Hallelujah. And this is my prayer this morning. Is that we not only become hungry for His presence, but we become hungry also for His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. We have communion this morning. The communion was made possible because Jesus allowed himself to be crucified. You know, we, we don't realize always the importance of the crucifixion. You know, we, we get into this religious thing and we don't want to wear crosses with Jesus on it. And, you know, that kind of stuff. But sometimes it's, it's, it's good to, to reflect and see what Jesus did. He allowed his flesh to be crucified. You see, we, we do want to arise. We do want to shine. 
But before we arise, we must die. We must die to the flesh. Amen. That's why Paul said, it's no longer me that live. It's Christ that lives in me. He said, I die daily. So when we take communion this morning, I want us to, to see in our lives this day that we are, we, the desi- oh, oh, uh, let me put it like this, I want us to have that desire in us to crucify the flesh nature that always wants to rise up. You guys realize that? <laughs> the flesh always wants to rise up. But we have to keep them down. Amen. Go ahead and pass off the, the bread and the wine.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you, God, for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. We thank you, God, for by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We thank you, God, for the willingness that Jesus showed to be crucified. He was crucified so we can have life. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Let's partake. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. That blood that was shed for us. The blood that has cleansed us, God, from all sin, from all iniquity. That blood that made a way when there was no way. Father, we thank you, God, for the new covenant that was established through the blood of Jesus. That new covenant of love. That we can love the way you love. We can love you and love others the way you love them. Father, we thank you, God, for this. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's thank God for what was accomplished for us on the cross. Amen. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him for what was accomplished for us. 